the villains in the Adventure Time universe are already pretty stacked, but what if I told you that there's one major baddie that you are forgetting about? That's right, Dr. Gross. From her time on the human islands, right into her stay in the land of Ooh, where she carried out some of the most mind-boggling experiments. We'll uncover it all. But here's the catch. We have reasons to believe Dr. Gross might still be lurking in the shadow, pulling the strings in ways you wouldn't even imagine. The question is, are you ready to have your mind blown? Let's get started. Step into the world of Dr. Gross, a brainy bioengineer sporting some serious cyborg vibes. Picture it, living it up on a remote little nook of the world known as the Human Islands. Yeah, that's right, human-only hideaway where folks are popping and the vibes are good. But here's the kicker, they've got a pretty hardcore no-entry, no-exit rule going down, strict as it comes and guarded by this colossal beastie known as the Guardian. This guy's got a clear-cut mission, squashing any attempts at escaping on sight. If that wasn't gnarly enough, there's more. Meet the Seekers, some bionic superhumans handcrafted by the Gen Engineer. Their gig? Patrolling the outskirts of the islands, putting the lid on any escape artist vibes and shipping off those that give escape a shot these trippy re-education camps. That's right, folks. Hiders don't stand a chance here. Except for Martin. But here's a zinger for you. How did our pal Dr. Gross morph into a bioengineer, huh? Break it down, and it looks like the peeps who hit the bricks after the Wild Mushroom Showdown fit two molds. On one side, we've got the tech-loathing lot who've gone hugging trees and getting back to nature. Back to Nature Island. And then we've got the tech lover, the ones who are all about the gadget life. Enter stage right, Dr. Gross. She's clearly sailing on a tech lover's boat, mastering these machines, and dialing up her engine's prowess. And here's a secret nugget for you. It's a good bet she schooled up on all this knowledge from none other than Mo. Yep, that's right. The very same whiz who cooked up our buddy Bimo. Don't believe me? Clip back to that sweet number, the island song. As those boats dock up on the island, you'll clock a blimp zipping by for a hot sec, stamped with Moco. But buckle up, because this tech fest is about to spin wildly out of whack. Just you wait and see. Kick back, folks, because we've got Dr. Gross stepping onto the scene. And oh boy, does she shake things up. Picture her as the ringmaster of this wild ride, guiding a band of clueless seekers. Here's the twist. She's cooked up these freaky implants that nestle right into their noggins. And you're thinking, cool, they're gonna direct a brain feed of info, right? Hold on to your hats because here's the crazy part. These implants are just smoking mirrors. They give Dr. Gross the puppet stream, letting her play the Seekers like a gnarly cosmic fiddle without their consent. One of these Seekers who's in for this wild ride is a kid, Kara Strong, or more professionally, Seeker XJ77, which also Susan Strong. But that's pretty crazy, right? She's a believer, you know, living in this paradise they call the islands. Outside world? Forget about it. We're talking monsters, illness, total chaos. But here comes the twist. Frida, Kira's top tier friend, she's an engineer, right? She wants to see the whole crazy wide world. Frida, she's the secret escape artist, hatching a scheme to bounce from the islands. And what does Kira do? Does she blow the whistle? No. She gets in on the action, decides to throw a helping hand. But here's where the gears grind. Enter Dr. Gross. Discovered the little plan, didn't she? And then, woof, using the implanted gizmo, she forces Kira to bust her best bud, Frida, against her own will. Frida's captured, bounced over to some re-education program, never tries to make the escape plan again, and starts making toys instead. This is our first sign of Dr. Gross showing no ethical boundaries as she can control her students without their consent, but it would only get worse from here. Dr. Gross, right? This super brainy gal who's really pushing the envelope with her lab work, really getting stuck into her experiments, always thirsty for more of that sweet, sweet knob. But here's the kicker. She's not exactly playing by the rule book. Taking in all those yawn-worthy safety regs and ethical lines in the sand might just be me, but that sounds like a pretty gnarly path to be treaded. Feel me? Dr. Gross is totally set on figuring out her craft's a to Z, right? So, what does she do? She starts to tinker with these super risky bio stuff, getting closer and closer to the danger zone. Then boom, in a blink, she lets loose this killer virus, and it's like wildfire across the islands. But even as things are going south real quick on the island, she doesn't hit the brakes. Nah, her experiments just keep on getting gnarlier and gnarlier, crossing all sorts of ethical lines. The only reason she was able to do all these wild experiments was thanks to it falling in the shell shock era when Minerva Campbell, yeah, the one who's all about lending a helping hand, was swimming in a sorry sea of sorrow. Picture it, folks. Her husband Martin's gone, AOL, taking their baby boy Finn with him, left her in real tatters, melting down in a major emotional mess. Our dear Minerva was too caught up in her heartbreak to keep tabs on her day job. And that's where it gets spicy, folks. In comes Dr. Gross, taking full advantage of Minerva's heartbreak, doing wacky experiments with no one to hold her back. So get this, the virus goes full ham, right? It wipes out like more than half of all humans and 100% of the helpers. I mean, yikes, that's some gnarly stuff, isn't it? So. Naturally, our morally questionable bioengineer lady decides to say peace out to the islands, up and leaves in her high-tech only-go lab, and lands right smack dab in the land of Ooh. Now residing in the land of Ooh, Dr. Gross is still grinding away in her lab, digging deep into like the crossroads of tech and biology. Things are leveling up in a big way, as her experiments are growing in complexity and scale. Doesn't even look like she's batting an eyelid about any ethics or potential bummer outcomes. It's like she's found this crazy kind of synchrony between the organic and metal parts. And oh boy, is she pumped 
to stretch these limits. Let's see how wild the doc's gonna turn this tech bio mashup, shall we? Now, picture this. A monster of a robotic ship buried smack dab in the middle of Utopia. That's her playground. And trust me, it's a wild testament to her genius and her quirks. It's chock full of magical, scientific marvels with a sprinkle of downright bizarre mixes of life and technology. Now, don't get it twisted. This isn't just some static lab we're talking about. No sir, really. This beast has got its moves. It can go up, down, wherever she wants, all in a sweet blink. Imagine that. It's like something out of a wild comic book, right? Well, get used to it, folks, because this isn't just a fantasy. It's her reality. So Dr. Gross would just be chilling day and night in the guts of this wickedly twisty mega machine, right? Practically drowning in comps and some seriously gnarly gear. Main thing on this gal's plate? Messing around with animals and cooking up crazy cool mix em up being that just spilled out from the depths of her wicked rafty and alright, slightly tweaked out, brain box. She'd whip up combos like shark mice, which are pretty much as wild as they sound. And even bears that could tell you the time. No joke. In fact, this bear that could tell you the time would end up playing a pretty big role in Ben and Jake's lives later on. Each creation was like its own thing, intriguing as a heck, but not gonna lie, definitely meant raising an eyebrow or two. Whoa, hold up. Dr. Gross, enthusiastic? Yeah, you heard me right. Her animated energy just seemed to light up a room though. You gotta believe that her vibrant vibe stands in some wacky contrast with the extreme nature of her experience. Now, she's thinking, these cyborg add-ons I'm slapping on these creatures? Yeah, they're upgrades, no doubt about it. Like, they're the next big step in evolution or something. But see here, this twisted POV just throws into sharper relief how out of touch she is with the actual ethical uh-ohs hanging over her work. It's pretty crazy, right? So, she whipped up this wacky bond with Tiffany. Yes, Tiffany. This dude who was once a heavy problem for Finn and Jake. And after all, Finn thought Tiffany was dead after the whole worm thing. But he's back. She's got this mad knack for gadgetry, so she hooked him up with this gnarly mechanical arm after past beef left him lacking in the limb department. The thing is, Tiffany, he didn't just take this sweet upgrade and peace out. Nope. He stuck around. Became her number one helper. Her go-to sidekick. He was all in, totally buying what she was selling, completely down for her grand scheme. Dr. Gross, breezing into ooh, stirred up a pretty wild mix of curiosity and the creeps. I'm talking unmatched tech skills and a seriously bonkers lack of ethical check marks let her bust through barriers nobody else would dare touch. Finn and Jake get wind of her antics while nosing around in Butopia and bam, they stumble smack into her lap. A close shave with Dr. Gross's operating table has them booking it out of there and in the boom that follows, the lab's toast and a bunch of animal hybrids are let loose to run wild in ooh. Although the lab is destroyed and seemingly Dr. Gross went down with it, Dr. Gross's impact would be far from over. In fact, there might even be signs of Dr. Gross still being alive. But back to the action in the center of Ooh. The echoes of Dr. Gross's doings are still making waves, setting off a domino effect that's gonna flip the script for everyone caught up in it. Take for instance our buddy Clock Bear. You know, that bear that could tell the time? This being was one of the many hybrid animal creations of good old Dr. Gross. And after Finn, Jake, and Susan busted him out, he just drifted off into the vast expanses of Ooh. But hold up, this isn't the final curtain call for Clock Bear. Nope. He's set to come back with a bang, playing a mega role in the unfolding stories of our dynamic duo Finn and Jake. Let me break it down for you. This saga kicks off in the agent workplace of our deal pals Joshua and Mark. This patch of real estate is now under the watchful eye of Kim Kilwan. The dude sends out one of his boys, a chap named Rennie Ham, over to do a little snooping around the property. But plot twist. Rennie comes back and he's all shook up, scared out of his wits by whatever he bumped into. Now our bro Kim Kilwan is way curious and he decides it's time to bring in the big Gus. So where does he turn? Straight to Finn and Jake, our adventurous duo. He's like, hey guys, I need you to do your thing. Get this old office the once over and suss out what's rattling Rennie's cage. Finn and Jake roll up thinking, hey, we might be in for a showdown with our parents' spirit. But oh man, they got slapped with something way beefier. It was pretty much a blast from the past up in there, full of this trippy time jumping shenanigans, throwing up crazy illusions of the duo as ankle biters and all these old school moments. And man, don't even get me started on the ticking sound, loud and clear, screaming time slip ahead dudes. Wait till you hear this. Jake, prepped in his, like, cooking armor, found himself eyeballing his own birth. Yup, utterly bananas. If you ask me, I kid you not, that's how it all went down. Well hey, these so-called time slips weren't just run-of-the-mill sneak peeks of days gone by. No. These these encounters were mashing it up with the here and now in ways that had Finn and Jake taking a serious look-see at their world. Picture it. Finn's right there and holding many versions of himself and his bros, right? And these baby dudes were clocking him, serving as the link between what was and what is. Got it? They're connecting the past and present dots. So as it turns out, the root cause of all this time loop weirdness was, surprise surprise, our buddy Clock Bear. No biggie, right? Just under the weather. The same Clock Bear whipped up by the whiz Dr. Gross, mind you. When we gave the guy a bit of a wind up, poof, all these mind bending time slips vanish. Just like that, we're back to the ordinary humdrum of our trusty old office. Now, before the dust fully settled, our pal Jake had this super crucial run in with Shapeshifter. I'm talking about 
Warren Ampersand here. This dude goes and paints Jake all blue and even makes a tiny portal for him to skip out and eventually led to Jake finding out who his real dad actually is. While the repercussions of Dr. Gross's actions are pretty deeply felt in Ooh, they also open up new paths and possibilities for the characters. Jake's terrifying but somewhat enlightening encounter with Warren Ampersand, Finn's emotional message to his parents, and their shared understanding of the time slips. All of these are like singles, you know? Pointing out Dr. Gross's impact on the scene. Stuff's changed. Things have taken a turn. And our adventure pals are right at the heart of it. Thanks to Dr. Gross. Now, remember back when I fired a theory your way about the potential for Dr. Gross still kicking it, right? Picture this. Tiffany played the martyr, putting the brakes on Dr. Gross's madcap experiments, queuing up the sweet exit for her pals Finn, Jake, and Susan from the lab. When this joint goes boom, it's Tiffany and Dr. Gross stuck in the thick of it, all right? Now get this. Peep the come along with me outro scenes and spot a surprise guest. Our homie Tiffany. Except hang on. Sporting some extra shiny bionic upgrades. Gnarly, ain't it? So let's connect the dots here. Dr. Gross must have survived the blow up alongside Tiffany and really buried the hatchet it seems since she hooked Tiffany up with a banging new upgrade. But dude, don't get too comfy. There's one massive question still hanging. Like seriously, what's the next wild brainstorm Dr. Gross has penned down on her wacky to-do list, huh? And if she actually made it out of live, you know the drill. She doesn't exactly chill out with her crazy curiosity and non-stop testing. This brings to a whole new set of questions. One that's burning a hole in our brains. Like what wild transformations in the land of Ooh is in for thanks to Dr. Gross. We're grabbing about a gal who pulled off some pretty bonkers biology experiments, whipping up hybrids right out of a storybook, and leaving a mark so colossal, it's still calling the shots in the land of Ooh. So who knows what could be next? But whatever it is, you can bet your life Dr. Gross is going to whip up something super risky and way over the good doctor line. Super unethical. She's got that down to a T. So while we've explored the technological genius and morale ambiguity of Dr. Gross today, it's worth noting that she wasn't the only human who managed to survive the mushroom apocalypse from the land of Ooh. There's another figure, shrouded in mystery, who spent centuries isolated on a desolate island. A story interwoven with heartbreak and resilience. Have you ever wondered about the puzzling character of Alva? Her chilling solitude and her tireless quest for human contact. By clicking on the next video, we'll delve into the tragic story of Alva, where we unravel her mysterious past and discover how she fits into the grand saga of Adventure Time. Prepare yourself to witness an intriguing narrative that'll make you question what it means to be truly alone. Join us on this exploration and experience a whole new perspective on survival and longing in the land of Ooh. Click now and let's embark on this compelling journey together. But if you made it to the very end of the video, I want to say thank you. And if you want to support me further, hit the join button right next to the subscribe button. You get a ton of cool perks, including custom emojis, custom badges, and your name shouted out at the end of every video. So why wait? But as always, my friends, stay adventurous.